Welcome to the stream. We're live for today at the Euros, brought to you by the Football Fan Show. How are you doing? I feel incredibly tired because I've just watched England, and, and England are really fucking boring to watch. Oh, stupid chair. Um, welcome if you're watching, and uh, thank you very much for watching. We're live on both Twitch and YouTube tonight. Yeah, we're, we're, we're cheating on Twitch. Woohoo. Of course, we are not sponsored by many of the brands that you see, but the players hate the bottles, so if you're watching for the first time on YouTube, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Um, I have just finished watching one of the more boring games of football. Um, why can't England ever seem to win more than a... Can they ever play entertaining football? It would be nice for once. It'd be nice for once. Um, we are... <laughs> be nice if they played entertaining football ju just once just once yeah england have won by a goal to nil against the czech republic in a tediously dull game and i wish i'd watched the scotland match because that seems more entertaining but uh, a england are through but we already knew that at the start of the day so it was a rather meaningless game with both teams already having been uh, secured their place in the last 16 because i believe czech republic are one of the, the top four uh, third place teams because Croatia now finished second uh, snatching uh, a place in the last 16 from the uh, jaws of defeat which was uh, bizarre because I didn't think Croatia deserved to go through and every time I say a team oh I quite fancy them uh, apparently you know they just go on and, and lose so if I say I fancy your team to win I'm very sorry that you're about to lose so <sighs> With that said, how are you doing today? If you're watching, drop a comment, whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitch. As always, I am drinking Coca-Cola. Don't drink water. Drink Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola is your friend. Coca-Cola did not sponsor this video, but if they ever do want to, let me know. Same with Heineken, even though I haven't drunk Heineken in years. It's uh, not a very nice beer. Um, sorry, no, it's a lovely beer. It's a great beer. Uh, just because the footballers hate it doesn't mean I have to, right? I need that sweet, sweet sponsorship money as well. I'm not a millionaire that can snub a brand on a press conference table. We have coming up today, we'll, of course, bring you the lowdown on the Czech England game as well as the Croatia Scotland game which was the far more interesting of the two matches let's be fair but uh, obviously England fan watching the England game um, and of course we're still asking the ultimate question why Joachim Lowe sniffs his fingers and if you think you can answer it that is the European football conundrum also, we've got team news ahead of tomorrow's games, and we'll we'll check in with the stat man. But but be sorry, so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not in the mood tomorrow. You know what? Tomorrow I got my first COVID vaccine jab. Tomorrow, I'm 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 not excited about it. I'm tired as hell. I just watch England. I feel pissed off. I feel like I've just wasted a lot of time watching England. Why do I watch England? They're so boring. Anybody else find England just tediously dull to watch? They're just so boring to watch. No, it's a 1-0 here and a 1-0 there. 1-0... Yeah. <sighs> just play like Italy! They have the players. Don't tell me they don't have the players. They have quality. And they've got pace in Jaden. Uh, Jaden. I keep calling him Jordan Sancho, but it's Jaden Sancho, Jadon Sancho. Um, but they never seem to play him. And on Twitter, all, all all of Germany is now up in arms, saying you gave him eight minutes, eight minutes. Um, there's a reason English fans don't rate Jaden Sancho, and I'll get onto it in a bit. So let's go through tonight's games before we give you some news from tomorrow's matches, some team news as well, and we'll tell you how Group D actually finished. Let's start with the with the game I just watched, the most tediously dull and boring game uh, of the two. Making me wish 
I had not wasted my time. Uh, Raheem Sterling's second goal of the tournament. He's the only one that can score in an England shirt at the moment. He did hit the post early on uh, from a great chance. But uh, second goal of the tournament for uh, Raheem Sterling. Um, he was uh, able to uh, get a headed goal from uh, Jack Gorelish cross, uh, which marked his first assist, his first start at the tournament with an assist. Uh, Bukayo Saka was also involved in the goal, and the Arsenal fullback was particularly impressive in the first half with his diving runs, which is probably why Jaden Sancho didn't play because Saka, you know, they play Saka in a in the same position. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'd pick Saka ahead of Sancho as well. Going to get a few German fans going, what are you nuts? Sancho is so much better. Former Swindon Town player tweeted out to say, ah, you know, he gets eight minutes. Eight minutes. And uh, that is it. That is it. Um, I love that. Darren Bent, Saka, absolutely superb. Does he start on Tuesday? Um, mm -hmm. This was the opportunity to rotate the squad, of course. Uh, of course, you know, you can go vote in your game of the day, what you think was the game of the day. Don't vote for the England match. It was fucking boring. 75% of you went with the with the Czech Republic New England 1, Croatia 3, uh, Scotland 1 is the other game on 25%. Vote for... You know what? Even if... If I could vote and completely, you know, obviously I can't because it's it's the poll by the channel. I shouldn't be voting on it. I'd vote Sc Croatia Scotland, and I didn't even watch that match. I didn't even watch the Croatia Scotland game, but I know for a fact it was better than the England match. Um, Sterling had hit the post inside the first two minutes with a lob, but was on the score sheet soon afterwards with that headed effort from um, Jack Gorelish. Harry Kane saw a strong curled effort kept out by the Czech keeper, while uh, Tomas Hollers strike had Pickford scrambling. I shit with names. Uh, the second half was largely forgettable. Oh boy, was it! That second half was drab. It was dull. What can I tell you about that second half? It was so boring. It was just absolutely one of the more boring matches that you could watch. Uh, that second 45 minutes was crap. I am sorry to tell you, it was absolutely crap. And uh, yeah, just not worth it. Just not worth it at all. Uh, not worth watching at all. Should have watched the Scotland game. Not that I'm shitting all over England. And their 1-0 win. Why can't we just go... Why why don't we as, as a squad just go, You know what, lads? We've scored one. How about we go get a second goal? And then once we've scored two, how about we go get a third goal? Because that's how Italy are playing. And I really rate Italy. Because normally, they'd in the past, Italy would have gone... We're 1-0 up, let's just defend that. But instead, under Roberto Mancini, they've gone, no, lads, we're going to get a second goal and a third goal. Can we just get Roberto... Like, I don't... Like, once... Once Roberto Mancini's done with Italy, can we can we please get him in to the England job? Because I would love Roberto Mancini as England manager because he's actually... Uh, he'd be so much better than... Um... He'd be so much better than Gareth Southgate, let's be honest. Um, I would, you know, the way the Italians have played in this tournament, I would love England to play even a fraction of that quality. But instead, it's a 1 0 win, 1 0 win, and a 1 That That second half was so freaking boring. I want to sue the England team. I want to sue the England team for my time. That second half was so fucking boring. And before you say, oh, you're, you're a typical England fan, aren't you? You know? No, you're never satisfied when you win. No, because I want to be entertained. Football is entertainment. It's not so much sport anymore. It's all about entertainment. You know? 
I'm just not going to watch. I don't think I'm going to watch any more England matches. Anyway, we're going to go get out and knocked out the last 16. I'm being very positive tonight. It's just the way they play is completely uninspiring. In my point, of, from my point of view, the way that they play is completely uninspiring. And yeah. Although, as the commentator said during the match, France played defensively, quite defensively in 2018, but they still had quality and were able to get forward and get goals. Um, Portugal definitely played very defensive football in 2016 and won the damn thing. So, you know, who's to say I'm wrong? Any footballing expert, any expert on football, I suppose. That'll tell you. Hi, Shan. Uh, where's the bottles of water? No, only Coke. Only Coke. We don't drink bottles of water here. We want Coca-Cola and Heineken sponsorship money. Have it your way. Oh, wait, that's Subway. Um, I've seen Sunday league match with more entertaining than that England game tonight. I wouldn't be surprised. Sunday, Some Sunday league l lads, they actually go for it. Because they're like, well, we're going to fucking lose anyway. So we might as well go forward and, and play a bit. Uh, so, yeah, it was a nothing game. England are through, but they were already through thanks to the Belgium result last night. The Czechs are also through despite finishing third in the group because they'll be one of the best third place teams and and uh croatia with that emphatic win over scotland which we're going to get to now uh securing second spot from the croats don't deserve to go through they were they were pretty terrible in both their games um i'm disappointed for scotland but also how the hell did scotland get a point in this tournament what crap what utterly crap team did they get a point oh wait it was england England was so shit that they couldn't even beat a Scotland team that looked like they'd won the Village Fate to raffle prize to play in Euro 2020. I am not hopeful and I am not confident at all. I just, I just want to get rid of Gareth Southgate. I just want him gone. i got to be honest. I, I want somebody else. I want the football style of Eddie Howe with the fiery nature of I don't know, Sir Alex Ferguson's hairdryer treatment. Just want to find that. If Can we find a manager like that? Because those players need to be bollocked sometimes. Maybe it's the tactics. Maybe I'm being too harsh on the players, but it's just so uninspiring. It's not coming home, though. It's not. Not playing that dreary crap. It's not coming home. You drew, we drew nil-nil against Scotland. It's never coming home if you draw nil-nil against Scotland. Sorry, Scots. Wales, I can understand. They've got Gareth Bale. Who have Scotland got? Sorry. England, better luck next time. Come back again next time. Sorry. I'm really just annoyed by the England performances at this tournament thus far. Gareth is not the one. He can take his waistcoat, which he's not wearing at this tournament, and shove it. Uh, go manage in League One, where he probably belongs. Ugh, just, I, uh, the fucking football so drab. Why? Ugh. Maybe, maybe the English press have hyped up this team so much that I think they can play like Italy, when if they tried, they'd get absolutely spanked. I don't know. Anyway, Scotland. <laughs> Let's focus on Scotland. Let's stop talking about England. Uh, Scotland's dreams of making it past the group stage for the first time, the first time in their history, came to a sobering yet unsus unsurprising end to the likes of Croatia. I think England and Scotland should have switched stadiums. I think Scotland played very well at Wembley. And should have played that final game at Wembley. It may have inspired them. As Sean says, it is annoying after having to wait an extra year for it. It's still not coming home. And uh, I know, I know, like the Europeans get annoyed when England fans say it's coming home, but they don't understand that it is actually a joke. That it is just banter. It is banter. We don't actually believe that, right? Last time I checked, most people I spoke to didn't believe it. Um, that it was maybe a tournament too early for England. Anyway, Scotland. Uh, with both sides needing a win, my heart's broken. 
Why? England always disappoint, don't they? Although, although this is the first tournament that they've kept a clean sheet in. Uh, uh, what was it? The 82 World Cup, was it? Where they had a second group stage, which was rather dubious. But it's the first clean sheet they've kept in a proper group stage since... Uh, I'm going to mention it, aren't I? 1966. The the year that haunts English football. Because <laughs> that's when we were the best team in the world. And we haven't been anywhere near it since. I would like to see England win a major tour. To be honest, I'd, I'd rather see them, you know, do well at this Euros. I, I would like to see them do well at this Euros. At the moment, it does. I'll give you the permutations of who, who, um, who will play who. Uh, so yes, uh, both sides needing a win. Uh, Nikola Valkic, uh, Val Valak, oh, I'm just shit with names. Arrowed in uh, for the, for the World Cup finalists into an early lead to silence Hamden Park. Uh, however, a thundering drive from uh, Callum McGregor before half time caused a rupture in the 12,000 uh, fans. A cacophony of hope. It has been described. Well, that hope was soon dashed as Luka Modric. <laughs> uh, first time shot after uh, after an hour broke Scotland's hearts and even Perisic uh, got the third uh, from a corner to record Croatia's first ever win over the Scots. <laughs> oh, wow. I, uh. who, 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 was, who was the crap team that gave Scotland a point? Who was? Oh yes, it was this. These guys. Um, Scotland should never have got a point against England. England just played incredibly badly, not to beat them. So Scotland are out. Croatia are through in second place. Let's have a look at the group D table before we move on. So Scotland are bottom on a point, minus four on goal difference. Czech Republic are third on four points. They're through as one of the best third place teams. One of the four best third place teams. They knew that before. Uh, the game was even played today after Belgium's win against Finland uh, last night. It was a 2-0 win uh, for Belgium against Finland. Uh, Croatia finishing level on goal difference, but on four points with uh, the Czech Republic finishing second. And then England on seven points, topping the group. And they will return to Wembley for the next game. And it does look like, potentially, that it could be Germany. That is... The it could be Germany. That is the opponent next for England, which fills fills me with absolute dread and fear. Speaking of Germany, they play tomorrow, as do Sweden, Slovakia, Spain, and Poland. We'll we'll look ahead to those games. Don't you worry. We've asked you to vote on which game you think is your game of the day all you've got to do is go to our twitter page at TFFS live and vote right now and currently 75 percent of you have voted for uh, czech republic nil england one i'm just supposing that's england bias coming through because that is that that's that no no croatia and scotland were the better were the better game they were the better. I didn't even watch Croatia Scotland, but I know for sure that that was the that was the better game. We've also got some Euro offbeat news, so uh, we'll cover the story uh, that sixty thousand people are going to be allowed in Wembley. Uh, that UEFA has declined rainbow lights at the Allianz Arena, and yeah, we'll we'll cover those and see what else is trending on the euros let's look ahead then to the final set of group stage matches and we start with the five o'clock kickoffs and an interesting one the leaders of group e which are not spain take on spain uh, it's slovakia versus spain uh, actually, no, Sweden are the groups, uh, group leaders. I forget about that. Uh, Sweden are on four points. Slovakia are on three. I mean, Spain need to win. I mean, a draw probably isn't going to be an... Actually, will it be enough? That third, the top four third place 
actually, to be fair, if they draw, they they would be in a better position than um, Switz or Switzerland are on four points, so that's one team. Finland are unlikely because they're minus two on goal difference. Ukraine are minus one on goal difference. So if Spain draw, I'm sure they'll just fit into fourth place because... Oh, no, the Czech Republic will be third. If Portugal... Ah, no, it's Portugal that need a point. So Spain do need to win. In fact, Spain very much need to win uh, against Slovakia. Uh, Slovakia need a point against Spain in Seville uh, to guarantee their place in the last 16 of Euro 2020. Spain will reach the knockout phase with a win, but could also progress with a draw And if uh, Poland do not beat Sweden. Spain, who have looked a little bit off kilter, let's just say that. Um, Chan says, ugh, that team. I assume you're talking about Germans. The Germans, yeah. Um... I, I assume you're talking about the Germans. I, I don't know that for a fact. I just assume. Uh, because they're the ones that always knock out England. Uh, so uh, Spain's defender, Cesar Aspilicueta, has said it's all or it's an all or nothing game. We have to approach it with uh, confidence that we will go through. Uh, we have a clear objective. And it's important we have the right mentality. Well... Make sure your strikers have that right mentality because otherwise you are not you are not going through because you need goals. You need goals. And and that is Oh, Jesus Christ. Um sorry, I got sent a picture by somebody that looks nasty. Somebody's got a uh, some uh, anyway, I'm not going to talk about it. Um this is a football stream, not a personal stream. So team news uh, Slovakia will again be without injured wi winger Ivan Strands. I'm hoping I'm saying that right because I'm shit at names. Uh, whilst defender Denis Vavro, Vavro, I'm going with that, uh, is also unavailable after uh, testing positive for the global bastard that I'm not allowed to mention on YouTube. Otherwise, you know, the I, I, I don't know. Uh, Spain's captain Sergio Busquets is expected to play after a positive, um, I'm just going to say it, COVID test. Uh, saw him miss the game against Sweden and Poland. And uh, Aspila Cueta, Thiago Alcantara and uh, Mikel Oyarzabal, I'm probably saying that wrong, are also in contention to start for Luis Enrique's side. <laughs> Let's go to the stat man. Ba -ba -da -bee, ba -ba -ba -da -ba. Ba -ba -ba -da -ba. I'm the stat man. Um, that was said with zero passion. Zero. I'm just tired. I'm just so tired after watching England. They put me to sleep. Slovakia have won only one of their last six meetings with Spain, drawing one, losing four. A home victory in the European Championship qualifier. Uh, back in October of 2014, a 2-1 win in that qualifier. And this is their first encounter at a major tournament. Spain have won all three of their previous matches on home soil against Slovakia, scoring 11 goals and conceding two. So that's why I'm backing Spain to win 15-0. Um, no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Could you imagine if Spain won 11 nil uh, or 15 nil? Uh, Slovakia are, are unbeaten in their final group stage games at both their previous two major tournaments, uh, winning 3-2 against Italy at the 2010 World Cup and drawing 0-0 with England at Euro 2016. We remember how painful that was. England subsequently got knocked out by a supermarket. Thanks, Iceland. Uh, they have progressed from the group stages at both previous tournaments. Well, you know what we say about the stats. You know, Belgium hadn't beaten Finland since 1968 until they turned up and beat them. So, you never know. You never know what could happen. That's all I can say on that front. These stats mean relatively nothing. But I'm still going to read them out because it wastes time. Uh, Slovakia had 10 shots without being able to get it without being any on target 10 shots in this entire tournament 
Oh no, no, sorry. Ten shots without any being on target in their one nil defeat to Switzerland. That was just in one game. They had ten shots, zilch on target. Sounds like Harry Kane, although he actually got one on target today. Um, this was the only. This was only the fifth instance of a team having ten or more shots but having none on target in a Euros game since 1980. The first since Croatia against Portugal at Euro 2016. They had 17 efforts and none on target. I, I, I don't want to imagine watching those games and being a fan of those teams. Just England's enough for me. Uh, Spain have drawn both of their Euro 2020 matches thus far. And in European Championship history, only one side has drawn all three of their games in a single group stage, that being their neighbours, Portugal, in 2016. And I'm um, struggling to recall what happened. What, what did Portugal do in 2016 after drawing all their... Oh, wait, they went and won the damn thing. Only Italy. Um, from uh, 1980 in, to 1982 have ever had a longer run of successive such draws. Uh, Spain have missed five of their past eight penalties taken in European Championship finals, excluding shootouts. So in open play, uh, a run going back to the 1984 tournament. Uh, I'd say I'd back... Spain, but quite frankly, if there's any Spanish people watching, I'm not going to back it a single team because everybody I back loses. So, that shows you how much I know. The other game, 5 o'clock by the way for that one, uh, UK time, but the other game is uh, the league or the group leaders, Sweden uh, taking on Poland. Poland must now win against Sweden in St. Petersburg and only that win will take them through to the last 16, but anything else, they are out. Sweden are through and will top the group if they win, which means a last 16 tie in Glasgow. Former Celtic uh, defender Mikael Lustig said, a lot of Swedes live in Britain, so they'll be able to travel there. And I have a lot of friends in Glasgow. If the Swedes slip up, Slovakia or Spain could top the group. Of course, uh, Sweden are only on four points. Uh, they would be one of the four best top third place teams should they finish third. So they will end up going through anyway. Uh, it's a bit weird, that situation. But, you know, they're through uh, with the third place teams. I'm, I'm always struggling to work it out when a team... What third place teams are the best teams. But anyway, let's go to the B... Ba, 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 stat man. And Sweden have won nine of their last 11 matches against Poland. Drawing one, losing one, including... Each of the last five, the last Polish victory dates back to a home friendly in 1991, which was a 2-0 win for Poland. Team news then, and Swedish midfielder Albin Ekdal uh, has a minor niggle and will not play, or will not take full part in training. And uh, Matthias Svanberg is still trying to find the full fitness, uh, find his full fitness after recovering from COVID-19. Two of Poland's Premier League players are uh, doubts. Southampton defender Jan Bedna Bednarak has a muscle problem, and Brighton midfielder Jakub Moda is uh, out with a knee injury. So they will have uh, fitness checks before the game. It's unlikely that they'll play a part in those games. Back to the stats, and Sweden and Poland, own, their only previous encounter at a major tournament came in the second round of the 1974 World Cup, a 1-0 win for Poland. Sweden have kept clean sheets in the last two Euro 2020 matches thus far, a goalless draw with Spain and a 1-0 win over Slovakia, the tediously dull game that may have been voted the most boring game of the tournament before England plays Scotland, and that became the most boring game of the tournament. Or am I just being really harsh on England? Am I being really harsh on England? Because I think they should play better. Sorry, I'm making this a very anglicised uh, stream tonight. But that's true whenever England play. I've got to stop doing that. Some 88% of Sweden's goals at the Euros have been scored in the second half of matches. 23 out of 26. The highest percentage of any side 
with uh, at least three goals at the tournament. And um, yeah, that's that's some Swedish facts for you. Some Poland facts now. Uh, Poland have won just one of their last nine matches across all competitions, drawing four, losing four, beating Andorra, that great nation of quality, that great marker, by three goals to nil in March. Their five-match winless run of three defeats and two, uh, sorry, three draws and two losses is the longest since September to November of 2018, which was six matches, six games. Um, they have won their final. They've won their final group stage game in both of their last two major international tournaments, uh, beating Ukraine at the 2016 Euros and Japan at the 2018 World Cup. Failing to win this match would be the first time Poland have not won any of their group stage games at such a competition since Euro 2012, and I believe they hosted that one with Ukraine. Was that Euro? That was Euro 2012, yeah. 2016 was in front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am getting it right. Sorry, Austria. I, I always get the, the Poland-Ukraine Euros mix, mixed up with Euro 2008, which was Austria and Switzerland, which is the one that England didn't qualify for. Thanks, Steve McLaren. That takes care of the five o'clocks. Uh, Group F tomorrow, both eight o'clock games. Big matches as well as uh, Germany take on Hungary at the Allianz Arena. And uh, Team New Germany have been boosted by both Matt Hummel and Aikai Gudawan returning to training after the pair picked up knocks over the 4-2 in the 4-2 win over Portugal. Uh, Thomas Muller has a serious doubt after sustaining a knee injury in that game. And Lucas Kosterman is likely to remain unavailable. At Hungarian captain Adam Sazala. I'm just terrible with names. Is a doubt after sustaining a knee injury in the same game. Uh, with sorry, uh, he's uh, has been cleared to play. Sorry, I'm reading from the wrong sentence. Uh, has been cleared to play after being substituted against France with a head injury. Head coach Marco Rossi uh, otherwise has no fresh injury concerns. It should be an easy win for Germany, but every time I say a team is going to win, they end up losing. So, and to be fair, the way Hungary played against France for the first kind of two minutes was great then they shut up shop and played really piss poorly uh germany could be eliminated uh at the group stages of consecutive major tournaments for the first time in their history of course in 2018 they were knocked out by south korea at the 2018 world cup i remember because i was on the phone to samsung at the time trying to get my phone fixed and i screamed down the phone thank you thank you korea to which the person kind of responded saying i'm based in london and I was like, can you just thank your bosses? They, I, I think that was the weirdest call they ever got. But it, I, I just really hate, you know, I just <laughs> really like watching good teams lose. That, that's that's what I love. Um, plus, it's it's funny for me. France at the 2010 World Cup was hilarious and Germany at the 2018 World Cup was hilarious. Uh, but if they are eliminated, this will be the first time in their history they were eliminated from group from the group stage of back-to-back -back tournaments. They have now scored a combined 302 goals across all World Cups and Euros, the most of any nation. France is second with 184. That is some gap. That is some gap. Uh, with Hungary, uh, they can win their final group game of a major tournament for the first time since a 3-1 victory over Bulgaria at the 1966 World Cup. Where have I heard about that tournament before? Hmm. Roland Sala, Salali. Sa, uh, I can't pronounce names. Sala, uh, Salai. I'm going with that. Has scored two goals and assisted. I know I'm shit with names. And assisted one in his last four appearances for Hungary. Good for him. Good for him. Good for him. Right. The other game, and some would say the more important game, is France versus, well, Portugal versus France. It's first versus third, with France on four points and Portugal on three points. So it's enough if, if France lose and 
Germany win and Portugal and Germany finish in the top two, uh, that uh, it would be enough for France to go through. So fr really, France are all, we already know France are through. Uh, but team news, um, Portugal will assess the fitness of Jao Felix and Nuno Mendes, who are yet to feature at the Euros uh, because of muscular injuries. Ruben Diaz will miss the last 16 with another booking, if he gets one, uh, whilst Jao Moutinho and Renato Sanchez could start after coming off the bench against Germany. Uh, France forward Usman Dembele, we told you this yesterday, has been ruled out for the rest of the tournament, not going to play another game uh, with a knee injury sustained against Hungary. Lucas Hernandez is expected to be available following a minor injury. Now, this is a tough one to predict, which is why I'm not going to do it. I'm going to bottle out. But the stat man, Portugal's victory at Euro 2016, is their only, is their only win in 13 games against France, having drawn one. And lost the other 11. This is the fifth major tournament meeting between these two sides. But the first time they met. Uh, but it's the first time that they've actually met in the group stages. Which is um, another interesting factoid. Um, all of the previous encounters took place in the semis. Euro 84, Euro 2000, the 2006 World Cup or the final of Euro 2016. France won the first three, whilst Portugal won in 2016. There have only been three goals scored in the last four fixtures. Portugal's defeat versus Germany was just a third in their last 31 games, having won 19 and drawn nine. It was only a fifth outright defeat in a competitive game in seven years under Fernan Fernando Santos, and they are the first reigning European champions in history to concede four goals in a game. Uh, the draw ended, so the uh, previous game for France, uh, the one all draw against Hungary, that draw ended France's uh, run of five wins and five successive clean sheets. It was the first time they had conceded a goal in 527 minutes. France remain unbeaten in their last nine matches at a major tournament, winning seven, drawing two. And they have drawn their final group stage at the past three major tournaments. I mean, if France get a point, they, they, they'll, they'll go through. If Portugal get a point, they will probably go through as one of the best third place teams. And if Germany beat Hungary, they will go through. So really, if Germany beat Hungary and France and Portugal draw, then they're all going through to the last 16. There you go. And at the minute, I believe the team that finishes second in this group will face England at Wembley. Uh, at, which at the moment is Germany. <laughs> no, I don't want this. So yep, yeah, that is the fixtures for tomorrow. Uh, there are 23 minutes left, by the way, if you want to vote in our poll, uh, asking for your game of the day. It's uh, currently 25% of you believe Croatia 3, Scotland 1 should be your game of the day, whereas the Czech Republic nil, England 1 has 75% of the vote. And who says we're biased towards England on this show? Says the guy in the England shirt. Right, European Championship news outside of the games, and that is that crowd capacity at Wembley will be raised to more than 60,000 for the semi-finals and the final. And uh, that's what the government has said. It means the stadium will be 75% capacity uh, for those games. The increase will see the largest crowd assembled for a sporting event in the UK in 15 months. It's something that UEFA were pushing for, and apparently... There were murmurings that UEFA may move the final away from Wembley if the if there wasn't a large capacity crowd, despite uh, the lockdown ending day seemingly moved. I refuse to call it what the the, the media call it. But sixty thousand potential fans for the European Championship final and semi finals, and also. At the Euros, uh, UEFA has declined a request to light up the Allianz Arena in rainbow colours before Germany's game against Hungary tomorrow. Uh, Munich mayor, Munich's mayor, Dieter Rita, I'm probably mispronouncing that, uh, made the request in protest against a new law in Hungary that bans the sharing of any content promoting homosexuality 
and gender change to under 18s. UEFA have denied the request because of the political context. Rita has described UEFA's decision as shameful and uh, released a full statement which you can read online. So uh, the Allianz is not going to be a rainbow coloured stadium tomorrow. And we've got 60,000 fans at Wembley as well. So that's fantastic news. And that, and now we're going to hopefully, let's have a look at the last 16 as it stands. Because we, we should be, we have a kind of clearer picture of who is going to play who. So on Saturday, Wales will face Denmark at 5 o'clock. Then Italy play Austria at 8 o'clock, which I believe is at Wembley. I believe that game's at Wembley. Um, the the uh, Welsh-Denmark game is in Amsterdam. Uh, the Netherlands are going to play the third, play, uh, one of the third-place teams, as are Belgium. Uh, whereas Croatia will play the second-place team in Group E, which is... Um, Group E is currently... Slovakia, that's Spain's group. Um, whereas I believe the Group F winner takes on the third place team from A, B, C. So the Group F winner is at the moment France. Uh, France, yeah, France, who are, who are on four points. And then Tuesday, England faced the second place team from Group F. At the moment, Germany. Not looking forward to that. And the Group E winners take on the third place team from the either A, B, C, or D group. So, you know, they take on one of the third place teams. Uh, why do we have to play a second place team? Why can't we get one of the third? Why can't we get one of the runts of the litter? Why don't we get a third place team? I mean, come on. It's coming home, lads. Come on. It's coming home. Why wasn't I in, <laughs> in this mood earlier? I have no idea. So that's the permutations of uh, what will happen. I hope England aren't going to play Germany. I don't want England versus Germany in the last 16 because the Germans will knock us out. Uh, even though this is not the greatest Germany team I've ever seen and the way that they've been playing recently isn't great. But I just, I am very, very, very fearful of... Uh, the Germans. Of course, Scotland uh, will being knocked out tonight, but uh, one of their best players, Billy Gilmore, obviously didn't play because he contracted coronavirus. And then two England players were forced to self-isolate because of that. Date. So the self-isolation actually dates back to Monday. So, after the game. So, But now that there has been confusion over the decision to enforce the England, two England footballers, uh, Mason Mount and Ben Chilwell, to isolate after coming into close contact with Scotland player Billy Gilmore, who tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, the, uh, the England duo must self-isolate till Monday, until Monday, so they will be available for Tuesday's game. Um, but, <laughs> you know, it's unlikely that they'll play because they won't have been training. Um, but after being deemed close contacts of their Chelsea teammate when the three Lions played uh, Scotland on Friday... Uh, but questions were raised over why Mount and Chilwell were affected after the England game, testing negative for COVID-19 on Monday, whilst no other Scotland player has been ruled out, was ruled out of today's game. You would have thought that the entire Scotland squad would be ruled out because they've been around this player a lot more than any of the English lads have. But uh, as Euro 2020 is planned in multiple countries against the backdrop of the pandemic, the strict rules are in force to ensure the tournament is not disrupted. So what actually happens when a player tested positive for coronavirus? Uh, could the match be abandoned as a result? And what steps are being taken to avoid other outbreaks? So, here are, here's what the concerns were. Mount Chilwell and uh, Gilmore were seen embracing at the end of England's match with Scotland at Wembley on Friday evening. However, it is understood the contact that caused the most concern was a 25-minute conversation between the three players in the tunnel following the game. Uh, the Chelsea trio had not seen each other since returning to London after the Champions League final in Porto on the, the 29th of May. Uh, government guidance states that the close contact of, of COVID cases included 
uh, include people who had face-to-face conversations within one meter and anyone who was within two meters for more than 15 minutes. The FA said the decision for Chilwell and Mount to isolate was taken in consultation with Public Health England. The two players are now self-isolating and training individually in private areas at Swindon's training uh, Swindon training base, at England's training base at St George's Park. I wish it was Swindon's training base. Uh, players at Euro 2020 are tested regularly and those who have tested positive must self-isolate for 10 days. Uh, any other players or staff deemed to have been in close contact with somebody with the virus during the tournament also have to self-isolate for 10 days it means Gilmore was unavailable for tonight's game Scotland probably needed him against Croatia because they lost 3-1 and uh, if they had progressed he would have also missed their last 16 tie Uh, the Scottish FA and Public Health England uh, are said to be satisfied that Gilmore had no close contact issues with any other members of the Scotland squad the isolation period for close contacts for the virus cases includes the date of their last contact with a full 10 days according to government guidelines and Mountain Chilwell came into contact on June the 18th so must isolate until Monday the 28th of June uh, with England already through to the knockout stages means Mount and uh, Chilwell could miss the last 16 tie but they won't because the last 16 tie is on the Tuesday because England won the group so they won't and um, because the game is going to be played on the 29th, whether they will actually be in the squad is a different story. But I am a little bit confused as to why the Scotland squad weren't being forced to um, self-isolate. Now, the rules regarding outfield players, they cannot be changed. Uh, but UEFA states that goalkeepers can be replaced during the tournament in the event of f- physical incapacity, even if one or two goalkeepers are still available in the squad. Players that have been replaced cannot return to the squad. But um, outfield players cannot be changed. So. <laughs> I love that. Uh, it, 2021 was a magic. To be fair, I said it after the Scotland game. It was a win for Scotland. England didn't turn up for that entire game. It was an absolute uh, disgrace. And I, you know what? It, during that stream, I, I railed on England because I said they were passionless. They didn't play well enough. Gareth Southgate should have been bollocking them. But he didn't. And uh, it, credit to Scotland. And I mean, let's face it. I'm not going to be really positive like all the pundits because... Oh, that's another thing that's really gotten on my nerves. The, the the bias. The bias of the English commentators. They're like, oh, he didn't look offside to me. He was a mile offside. Or, or oh, that looked like a foul. Yeah, he dived. Rawr. Just call it. Just call it. Like you... Don't, don't call it because it's an English player doing these things. Or an English player was slightly offside, so he must be onside. Or an English player got fouled, so it must be a free kick. That really grinds my gears. Can we stop doing that? Can we just have fair and honest commentary? If an England player is offside, say it's offside. Don't say, oh, I don't I don't think he was offside. What, what are you basing that off? Because he's English? Stupid commentators. Uh, agreed. Scotland did well in that game against England. Well, I think it reflects poorly on England that Scotland's only point came against England. Because Scotland were not very good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Scotland have not been very good at this tournament. But England must have been an extra level of shit. And England were shit in that game. Um. Yeah. I, I can't... England are getting knocked out the last 16. That's my... Pr- that, you know... It's not coming home. I don't want to hear it. And I heard, like, every time somebody says You're, it's coming home or something, I'm like, we drew nil-nil against Scotland. It's not coming home. Plus, if it did come home, Pretty Patel would probably go, yeah, you haven't been here for a while. Does your visa still count? Then fuck off. Um, um with, with... Aguero! Thank you for the follow. Uh, Louis 2K. There we go. Um, after the, the England-Scotland game, would you, here's, here's an interesting question that I would like to answer to ask, say. Uh, would you like to see the return of the Home Nations Championships? 
I would love that. Th they had a tournament, I think. It was sponsored by Carling a few years ago with the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales. But I'd love the British Home Nations Championship back. In throw in the Republic of Ireland, make it a Five Nations Championship, like in the uh, Six Nations in the rugby. Throw in, throw in the Republic of Ireland, make it a Five Nations Championship. England, Scotland, Wales, Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Be be fantastic. I know why they stopped it in the past, because we hated e we all hated each other, like... We were all willing to rip each other's heads off, and Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland certainly didn't like playing each other, and the England, the English and the Irish certainly didn't like playing each other. Um, but I think we've all we've all moved on there. It's just banter, isn't it? Now, I think you know, is it, is it not just water under the bridge? I mean, I'm from an Irish family, for goodness' sakes. England's multicultural now. Can we? Isn't it just all water under the bridge now? Isn't it? British Home Nations Championship. Uh, Louis 2K says, yeah, I'd like to see that. I'd like to see it too. I'd, I'd just... Because England and Scotland don't play each other enough, so it's kind of... It, it's presumptuous and arrogant to think that England should just trounce Scotland. Like, it's presumptuous and arrogant. And clearly it would be England and Wales fighting each other for that trophy. Now, I'm not going to say who's going to win, but it's presumptuous and arrogant from an English perspective to just think we're going to trounce Scotland, because evidently, we can't and we probably won't because everybody turns off <laughs> against the bloody English. Um, although, the, the I, I guess the counter-argument is what point would there be for the English team? Um, what, what would be the point for England? You know, playing these uh, sorry, let me let me pretend to get on my England high horse. Playing these so-called lesser nations like Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, where's the benefit for the three lines? Well, you didn't exactly beat Scotland in the European Championship, so there's the benefit. You can actually find out if you're better than Scotland. That is... Um, I do feel like it could be a very easy tournament for England, but we, we'd just struggle. We'd always put out a weak team if we did that. Um, I mean, England would probably, to be fair, England would probably just call up a bunch of debutants in that. Maybe, maybe Jaden Sancho could actually get a game in that tournament. Um, uh, thank you for voting in your game of the day. And surprisingly enough, I think this is a very, not, uh, um, Anglophile, uh, poll. Because uh, only 25% of you have gone with uh, Croatia 3, Scotland 1. I didn't watch that game, and yet I know it's the better game. I know it's the better game. But the Czech Republic nil, England 1 got 75% of the vote. So it is officially your game of the day. However much I protest and disagree that Croatia 3, Scotland 1 should be the game of the day. And I didn't even watch it. And I know for a fact it's a million times better than the England game. But you voted for it. It's on Twitter at TFFS Live. Thank you very much for uh, voting for that. We're back every day after every... Uh, I say every day. Actually, the group stage matches finishes tomorrow, so I get a break until Saturday. Uh, otherwise, we're back from 10 uh, after after every game at the Euros. I give Scotland's independence just for the... <sighs> Let's not make it political, but... Let's not make it political, but... Uh, thank you. If you know any marketing execs at Coca-Cola, Heineken, I will drink Coke on this camera. I will not. I will not move the bottle away. I will not say drink water. And also, if you... We need to answer the conundrum. And if you can help us answer the conundrum, why does Joachim Lowe sniff his fingers? And why... And, and if you can help us by going on our Instagram page at uh, the Football Fan Show on Instagram, we have tagged Original Source in a in a in a post trying to get them to sponsor Joachim Lowe. As we feel at this show on this channel that they're missing a sponsorship trick. They're missing a trick by not sponsoring Joachim Lowe. You don't want to get Old Spice or Lynx or whatever they call it in Europe, isn't it? Axe body spray in isn't it Axe in Europe? It's not Lynx in Europe, but it's it, you know, you get what I mean. So original source, he wants minty fresh balls. He wants minty ah yeah, my minty fresh balls. 
Yeah, we call it Lynx in the UK at least. I think it's Axe in the um, in Europe. But um, you know, that's like it's called uh, Walkers in the UK, but it's actually called Lays in in Europe, which is weird because I watched the Champions League and it's like, oh, that's a Walkers logo, but it's got Lays written on it. Um, but it's Walkers in the, in the UK. Anyway, that's it from us. That is it. We are back tomorrow from 10. Uh, yeah, we're back tomorrow from 10 o'clock, actually. Yes, we are back tomorrow from 10. So I'm very happy about that. So with with that said, thank you very much. I hope all the games satisfied you today because they were they were. Um, this was a pretty I mean, I just how do I end this? Like normally I end it with a joke by saying previously we've we've I've down some coke and went is there some vodka in there or something or we've made some sort of punchline but i guess england is the punchline i know it i've got the punchline we're shit and we know we are we're shit and we know we are we're shit and we know we are we're shit and we know